What's going on guys? So I am still out here in Detroit, Michigan at the Ford Proving Grounds. Got a journalist taking out the 40,000 pound trailer behind the F450 regular cab truck. We already towed with this beast. This is a 450 Limited. Uh, all these trucks, I believe, except one at the end, have the high output power stroke. If you see that in red, it means it's high output. Red, red. This is a 450 Limited. You gotta look at the interior real quick if you missed the last video. But yeah, that's absolutely insane. Um, and we towed a 30,000 pound conventional trailer. 30,000 pounds. What does that mean? That means this trailer, as it sits, weighs more than a fully loaded DRV 44 foot long fifth wheel, or more than a Lux 48 foot long fifth wheel. Those fifth wheels, luxury fifth wheels, weigh like 26 to 28,000 pounds when fully loaded. This, as it sits, is 30,000 pounds on a pintle hitch in the back of this truck absolutely insane and if you didn't watch that video you got to go back and check it out because well i'm gonna make sure you go back and watch it so you can actually see how this thing towed it because it was a uh, very surprising the driving impressions i had towing that much weight but today we're gonna be in this beast so i can tell this is a lot of weight this is what 20,000 pounds 24,000 24, pounds so let's go back to my rv reference again uh, a drv fifth wheel you guys probably don't know what a drv fifth wheel is drv is one of the heaviest luxury fifth wheels you can buy it's among probably in the top five Twenty-four thousand pounds is typically the gross vehicle weight rating of a fully loaded 44 foot long drv fifth wheel and you're telling me that this trailer as it sits weighs twenty-four thousand pounds that's crazy they have a weight distribution set up on the back of it this looks like a blue ox is that a blue ox are you sure or not sure. Let me see. It looks like a blue ox. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain that I'm right. And uh, yeah, they got it tied into the. Uh, looks like a. You got the three inch receiver on this truck too, right? I believe so. So yeah, we have a. We have a really really heavy setup going on here, and this is so heavy that you can actually see it's causing the back of the truck to squat slightly. And that's because this is a lot of weight and the axles are placed kind of far back on it as well too so you got a lot of weight resting in this area right here transferring to the truck and we're about to take this thing out on their uh, their proving grounds here to see how it tows i'm really interested this is an f350 with the high output power stroke so this is a one ton single rear wheel truck next to it over here is the dually and uh we're gonna go ahead and dive into this one hang tight i'll be right back All right, before we get any further, let's take a look at the numbers on this truck. King Ranch trim. This has a cargo capacity of 4,062 pounds. That's a lot of cargo capacity for a single rear wheel truck. Yes, sir. A lot of weight. It really is. That, that, that's pretty dang awesome. 1,200 foot-pounds of torque, 500 horsepower. 500. 1,200 foot-pounds of torque, 500 horsepower. That's insane. I'm very proud of that. At what point are you going to be like, well, 2000s the next goal. I just I can't imagine where <laughs> you go from here. This is crazy. And the platform has been proven to be reliable. That's the thing when when 2017 came around or not, actually not even that 2011 came around and the 6.7 liter power stroke appeared on the market coming out of kind of a weird power stroke era. Everyone was like, is it going to be reliable? Is it going to be a good platform? You guys have proven since 2011 that that six or that 6.7 liter has been a phenomenally reliable platform right yeah in, in production for over a decade with incremental changes to increase the capability over time and now here we are at 23 model year with 1200 500. that's ridiculous it's crazy well we're gonna hop in this truck we're gonna take it for a quick trip check it out king ranch interior look at this this is absolutely beautiful um this is a gorgeous truck Okay, so we are set up inside of this 2023 Ford Super Duty with the high output 6.7 liter power stroke. Uh, this is the King Ranch interior, and I love the King Ranch interior. I have a King Ranch, right? My 450, I have a 2017 450 King Ranch, and boy, this just reminds me of it. It's beautiful interior, just larger screens, a lot more technology in this thing. Um, I got Andrew and Sean here with me. They're both with Ford. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Andrew Brown. I work in vehicle engineering on Super Duty, so I've been on the 23 mile year program 
for about four years now, so since we really started kicking off this program. Very cool. Sean Spanbauer, a 6.7 liter diesel technical expert. Wow, so I literally have the best of the best in this truck with me. I mean, I could kidnap you guys and just make content for the rest <laughs> of the year. This is super cool. So we have 24,000 pounds worth of weight behind us. Um, this truck with the high output power stroke, well, if it's any anything like the truck the trucks I've been towing before, and this is the same engine that's in the F450, same same transmission, same engine, a little bit different axle, a little bit different suspension setup, right? And this one's made more for like the everyday owner that's gonna tow, like a 250, but with more payload capacity and such. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys a question, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a trick question that you may not be able to answer, Sean, but Andrew might be able to answer. Okay. Yeah, it was Sean, right? Yep. Okay. Is there any real suspension difference between an F250 and an F350? So there's definitely differences in the the springs. So you have different rear springs. Okay. You know, higher capability in the rear. So the spring rate. Spring rates can be different. I think front springs will be different as well. So okay. Definitely do. And there's gonna be. I'm not the expert in the you know the chassis detail. But there's gonna be some slight differences in the frame as well. Okay. All right, because a lot of times people wonder, is it just like the, the lifting block to make it slightly higher in the back, the overload springs perhaps? But um, I've always been told that the spring rate is slightly different. It's slightly increased on a 350 versus a 250. Mm -hmm. Even though they may look the same, the type of steel and the hardness of the steel and how it's actually bent, all of that can impact spring rate. So things that look the same can be different, right? You got it. All right, so we are going to take off here, and uh, you guys just guide the way, and anything you want to talk about on the way, let me know. All right. So you just go ahead and take a right out of here. It might be the, probably the same route you took before, but if you want to mix things up a little bit, I think we can be a little flexible. Well, I think the last time I went on the, uh, I forgot what. Oh, what, the basic durability the route? The durability route. That was fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> but we went in the, the 450 with the 30, or the 40,000 pounds on it. Yeah, we got some. Uh, designed in potholes on that road to kind of mix things up. I like so, the inverted potholes. That was potholes, that, that was interesting. Right. So I don't know if you noticed it, you probably saw it on the other truck, but when you turn your turn signal on to leave the parking lot there, we have the trailer turn signal views now, which is new for 23 mile a year. So mm -hmm. if you're turning right, that brings up your right mirror camera so you can see down the right side of your trailer, helping you make turns or avoid you know something in your blind spot if you didn't notice it. So that's new. That's something you can turn off. So if you, for example, didn't want to see that, you can turn it off, but it's only available when you have a trailer to connect. Okay. So right off the bat, uh, there's a difference in terms of towing dynamics between the 450 and this truck. Um, the 450, I'm going to say that it was less noticeable that you were towing a trailer. And I think it was mainly because of the stiffer springs. They didn't under, under load. They don't compress as much. And it, it, it felt like you didn't really have a trailer behind you. I can definitely tell I got weight behind me on this one. Uh, mainly because any little imperfection, you kind of feel the back move a little bit more as far as up and down motion. But from a, a practical perspective, it's, it's towing the trailer effortlessly. Man, we got the trailer yeah, brakes trailer dialed in on this thing. Dial that down a little bit. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to mess with the trailer brakes here real quick. Oh, whoo, we got these things <laughs> way <laughs> high. Down to five or four, maybe. Yeah. All right. Gonna follow this traffic circle sort of around, and we'll go back up to seven percent grade over there. So I don't know if you were looking at the HUD while you were dialing in the uh, brake gain there, but we actually display that in the heads-up display. Really? Um, while you're, so oh, yeah. you'll see that when you adjust the gain and if you apply the manual trailer brake. Yeah. So on the heads-up display, which you can't see from this camera angle, when you make adjustments to your trailer brakes, it actually shows you those in your actual heads-up display, which is nice. All right, so we're about to hit a 7.5% grade. All right, 7.5? 7%. 7 7% grade. And I'm going to floor it. 35 PSI at boost momentarily. Yeah. It's... <laughs> it's crazy. This is towing it like it's... It, well, I, I don't want to say it's towing it like, like it's not back there. It's towing it like I'm towing a trailer half its weight. That's probably the better way of saying it. If I was hauling a travel trailer that weighed 10,000 pounds, that's how this truck is hauling this trailer that weighs 24,000 pounds. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's like we're passing the 40,000 pound F450 over here. All right. So we're gonna follow this around and we'll go down the hill to the left. 
clear day from this perspective, you can actually see downtown Detroit from here. But fortunately, it's a little cloudy. Yeah. A beautiful area up here, too. Yeah, so you're clear. Okay, so. And real quickly, I don't think I have anybody behind me. I want to mess with the trailer brakes one more time while we get on this little stretch before we go downhill. Yeah, that's a lot better. Probably even drop it to four. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're about to go down grade to see how it feels. We have the engine exhaust brake on currently. I don't think, is it on automatic? I think we're just on at this point. You're not full engine brake. Yeah. What's the ideal RPM on the engine brake? So it, it can go up to 4,000 RPM. Yeah, th this truck really feels great hauling this type of weight. You know, I always tell folks, because uh, if you gentlemen don't know, my, my YouTube channel is all about towing RVs, okay. trailers. And, you know, I'm very conservative in my numbers. I always believe it's never a good idea to max out a vehicle. You should always have some room to play. Am I going to turn or go straight? go straight. And when you buy a vehicle with the intent of saying, okay, so this truck has a 10,000 pound maximum tow capacity, so I'm gonna go out and buy a 10,000 pound trailer, oftentimes you'll overload your payload capacity before you overload the truck's towing capacity. And when I talk about towing larger travel trailers, I usually say you should look at a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. Even though half ton trucks have become more capable than they've ever been, the reality of those, they're designed to be luxury, smooth riding pickup trucks. Whereas Super Duty is a work truck. Any way you slice it, as, as luxurious as you get it, it's designed to be able to accomplish towing tasks and working tasks with the least amount of effort needed. These trucks do such a better job at handling heavier trailers that are impacted by wind, impacted by sway, impacted by environmental conditions that a normal vehicle not towing or even towing a lighter trailer typically would, wouldn't be subjected to. So um, for me, like a truck like this, when you want to figure out what the ideal RV weight and size for a truck like this is, is, you know, you can get pretty dang heavy. I mean, we're hauling like this is a good example of a heavy travel trailer behind us. And we're at 24,000 pounds and it's towing it effortlessly. I don't feel any anxiety or stress when I'm towing. I don't feel as if I'm in a situation to where if I just do one little thing wrong or if I you know, get into heavy traffic that I'm gonna be white knuckling it the whole time. It feels, there's a very confidence inspiring aspect to how this is currently towing this trailer. And, and I can really appreciate that because at the end of the day, as many people that there are out on the roads towing, how many of them are doing it as safely as possible with the right tow vehicle for the trailer that they're towing? Um, and I would argue to say there's a lot of people who have the wrong tow vehicle towing heavy trailers. And this truck right here, as well as a lot of other three quarter tons, this isn't just Ford exclusive, but this truck right here with the technology they've put in place and the capabilities that it has to be able to handle again, 24,000 pounds worth of weight off the bumper. Talk about lever action. You got a lever arm back there that's transferring a tremendous amount of, of weight behind the rear axle. It's actually squatting the truck. It's a one ton truck and it's actually putting some squat on it. And it's still handling it effortlessly. I mean, it feels comfortable. It's it's very compliant. You guys have done a great job dialing in this truck. Thanks, we appreciate that because that's really what we set out to do, right? Is you know deliver the performance and the technology to give you seamless towing experience, right? You want you to be as comfortable as possible when you're pulling whatever whatever trailer you have to pull. That said, you know, out of all the trucks that I've towed with currently, this is the the truck I can tell I have a lot of weight behind me. Like right off the bat, I can tell that I'm I'm hauling a lot of weight. It's doing it very effortlessly and it's doing it easily, but it's it's a lot of downward pressure on the back of this truck and that's really where I'm feeling it. But 
I don't feel as if it's stressing the truck out. I just can tell that I'm hauling a trailer. And I always tell people, you should always be able to tell when you're hauling a trailer. Mm -hmm. This is such a weird perspective for me, this road we're on right now. It felt like we went down into a gully. Yeah. We also, with, um, you know, we hear a lot of feedback from customers that they want to see more information in the cluster. They want to know what's going on with the vehicle. So it's some small details we've added to 23 model years, the ability to see that kind of information in the cluster. And we brought the hug with the tow haul specific view. So now we have more gauges, more information so that the guy who's towing his RV or his travel trailer can see temperatures, you know, engine brake, go ahead and take a left here. So, uh, yeah, and definitely go back into my videos and check out the video that I, I took not before this one, but before the previous video. Um, and we actually spent a good 15 minutes just talking about a lot of the, that technology before we hit the road, because there's a lot of it. And there's a lot of uh, information that you're gonna want to play around with. I feel as if owning a truck like this, you're gonna discover nuggets of technology through your entire lifespan of owning the truck. There's so much stuff that you just have to Gosh, I mean, you, you just have to spend time in the truck. It's almost like learning a new smartphone. You know, like if you're switching from Apple to Android and you're doing it for the first time, you're going to be in there playing around with it for a while. And I feel like that's essentially what you're going to do in this truck as well. You're going to you're gonna want to play around with the different menu options, the different features, because there are a lot of them. It's kind of, when we started out, there's just tons of ideas of what could we include in this program on Unfortunately, we can never deliver everything that we want to do. We have a finite amount of time and resources, but we uh, really tried to get all the details right on this program. I, I, I don't know what, and I, I mean this honestly, I don't know what you've missed um, from a technology perspective or from a feature perspective because I often wonder, what's next? You know, 20, whatever, the, whenever the new model comes out beyond this one, what are you really going to be able to offer that, that is unique at this point is it just going to be a better version of something or is it going to truly be a new feature because i don't I, I really don't know what you could do beyond the technology that you've put in this truck and i'm going to tell you sometimes keeping technology is just as important as innovating and adding new technology mm -hmm. such as 12 volt outlets a lot of the other manufacturers one in particular has removed all 12 volt cigarette light style adapters from their vehicles and to me, that's that's heartbreaking. There's a lot of people with technology that needs those outlets. And when you eliminate them, you pretty much said somebody who invested three, or $400 in a strobe light or a camera or something, they can't use it anymore. And why should your truck be the limitation that prevents you from using investments that you've had, right? Mm -hmm. Real quick to wrap things up, Andrew, and then I'm gonna ask Sean, so what is your favorite single thing that you love about this truck? And here's a tough one for you. What would you do different if you could do something different? That is a tough question. That's a non-HR scrubbed question. All right. I can tell you, I think one of my favorite things, um, aside from just the effortless towing, I mean, the, the high output 6.7 is incredible. But from a technology standpoint, I really do like the heads-up display. I like how it's a little tailored to each drive mode, and you can see the information that you want to see. Uh, when you need to see it. So to me, that's really kind of my favorite new feature of the Super Duty. Okay, second question. Oh, this man, is the hard is, question. That's a tough one. I'm gonna have to think here while Sean answers the first part of <laughs> what his favorite feature is. So my favorite feature is I'm, I'm the engine performance technical expert, so I like the 500 horsepower, 1200 foot pounds. If I had to change anything, those numbers are never high enough for me. Right? That, that's my bread and butter, so. More, more, more power, more torque. Anyways, guys, I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending time with me and letting me take this beautiful truck out on this uh, this course and really just see what you guys have been able to do from a chassis performance and an engine performance perspective to make towing safer, make it uh, easier and more, more, I guess, confidence inspiring for people who may not do very much of it. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and give me a thumbs up, and we'll be back to talk to you again real soon.